Good day, everyone. Once again, um, from uh, PMB Wesleyan, we greet you in the name of Jesus Christ for our sermon today. Let's turn to the book of Acts, chapter 20, verses 22 and 24. And if we could give our sermon a title, uh, we would suggest Faithful to the End. Let us pray. Father, bless the scriptures we're going to read and what will follow from them. In your name we pray. And may we know, Lord, somehow thou hast spoken into our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Acts chapter 20 from verse 22. Paul says, Now I go bound in the Spirit up to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that jail and suffering lie ahead. But he goes on to say in verse 24, uh, it says, But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear unto myself, so that I may finish my race with joy. Now these are Paul's final words to the elders of the church at Ephesus. He's on his way back to Jerusalem. It's the end of his third missionary journey. And he, as he said, in every city en route, he has been warned by the Holy Spirit that nothing but trouble awaits him. And he uses the terms jail and suffering. That's awaited him. And now in this uh, verse 24, in that statement that he's made, that he's made, he makes uh, three great statements. And if you read into the heart of them, it's the, it's the heart cry of a shepherd uh, as he greets his people for the last time. And so he was greeting the elders from the church at Ephesus and he says it'll be the last time that they would see his face. But he goes on to say, and this is the first of the statements in verse 24, he says, none of these things move me. None of these things move me. Acts 20 verse 24. Um, if you can remember growing up, uh, we do, uh, and we might still sing the song, uh, we used to sing a chorus, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. These are the words of a hymn uh, originating from India. Uh, and the words are based on the, the testimony of a Christian martyr from the northeastern section of India. If you, if you will recall uh, reading church history, in 1904, there was a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon um, the people of Wales. And this extended to other areas of, 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 of Europe as well. But in 1904, as a result of that, of that outpouring, uh, a Welsh missionary, uh, he travelled halfway across the world to this region in northeast India um, to take the gospel message and to take the message of Jesus Christ to the people there who'd never heard of him. He was going there with a message of, of, of love and of peace and of forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ and the hope of eternal life afterwards. He arrives in a remote village and he preaches the gospel. He's met with great hostility and the people are telling him to get out of the village and to go. They don't want to hear his message, but he perseveres and he preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as a result of this, one man, his wife and two children, this little family, residents of this village, they accept Christ. And in their newfound joy, they began to tell others in the village of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, go home and tell the people what you've done for me. And so they are literally doing it. They cannot restrain themselves. Now the chief of this village, um, he was the chief uh, over a group of people who were known for their violence and for their brutality. And uh, he saw this message of Jesus as a threat to their own religion and to their own way of life. And so he calls the village together. You see, he's determined to stamp out the message of Jesus Christ. So he calls the whole village together and he hauls this man and his family before the people. They're on trial now. And so the chief says to the, the, the man, the father, he says, stop following Jesus. And this man, this tribesman, he replies and he says, no, I have decided 
and I'm not turning back. I will follow Jesus. And of course, this infuriated the chief and he threatens this, this father. He says, you see your two children here? He says, if you don't give up Jesus, he says, I am going to kill them before your very eyes. And the man, he replied, he says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And then the chief carries out his word. He orders one of his, his um, warriors to do the job. And so they go and they shoot these two children dead with their bows and with their arrows. Shoots them dead. And these two children fall to the ground dead. And now the chief says to him, Now, if you don't give up this Jesus, then I'm going to kill your wife. What do you say? And this tribesman, this brand new Christian, he goes on and he says to the chief, Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back. No turning back. And again he gives the order. And the tribesman um, witnesses as they kill his wife before his very eyes. And now the chief says to him, Now will you stop following this Jesus? Will you stop? If you were in his position, what would you do? Your family has been eliminated before your very eyes. What would you do? Now will you stop following this Jesus, the chief says. And again the tribesman gives his answer. He says, no. He says, the cross before me, the world behind me. He said, no turning back. No turning back. And again, the chief is astonished. He could not believe his ears. And then he had this, this man, this brand new Christian, this father, he has him killed as well. And so all four of this family are martyrs for Christ. And there they lay dead on the ground before the whole village. But their souls were with Jesus in heaven. Now, we could say, well, that's the end of it all. But there's a, there's a sequence to this. Many of the villagers who witnessed the death of this Christian and his family, um, they went on and they became followers of Jesus Christ themselves. And it doesn't end there. Even the chief himself becomes a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, none of these things move me. I'll stay true to Christ. And this is a family. They stood true to Christ. And the tribes, the tribes, tribesmen all gave their hearts to Jesus Christ. And those words of this Christian um, have decided to follow Jesus. Uh, they became the song of that village. They became the song of that village. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. What courage God gives us when we are to stand trial for Him. He gives us dying grace, they say. Dying grace. Shouldn't be afraid if we are called to die for Jesus Christ. He gives dying grace. Praise the Lord. Paul goes on to say, he says, Neither do I count my life dear unto myself. If there's anything we hang on to for dear life, it's our own life. We don't give that up easily. But Paul says, I do not count my life dear unto myself. In other words, he's saying, I am expendable. I am expendable. What does that mean? It means something like this. He's saying, God can use my life in any way that he chooses or sees fit. Expendable. Paul had long ago given up on his right to own himself so that God could do anything that he liked with him. Galatians 2.20, Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 8, Philippians chapter 3 verse 8, in his testimony he says, I've suffered the loss of all things, of all things. Why? So that I may have Christ. Christ had become his passion. Everything that he owned, he was willing to give it up so that he could have Christ. You know, when we think of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm quoting what somebody has said, um, they said, two crowns were held out to Jesus. The people wanted to take him and make him king. They even wanted to take him by force. And they offered him a crown that would be studded with diamonds. But there was another crown that was held out to him. And it was the crown 
of thorns. Now which crown did he choose? He chose the crown of thorns. And secondly, they go on to say two robes were offered to Jesus on that day. One was a crimson purple robe of the ancestral kings of Israel. The other one was the crimson robe of his own blood which would cover his body on Calvary. Which robe did he choose? He chose the way of the cross. I've suffered the loss of all things. Jesus suffered the loss of all things. Did you know even his own dignity on the cross? Why? So that he may purchase our salvation. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 9. Philippians 2 5 to 9. I'm reading from the Good News Bible. Paul writes and he said, The attitude you should have is the one that Christ Jesus had. He said, Who although he was God, he did not demand and cling to his rights as God. Instead of this, he gave up his own of his own free will all that he had, and he took the nature of a servant, and he became like a man, and he appeared in human likeness. Verse 8. He was humble, and he walked the path of obedience all the way to death, even the death on the cross. In other words, the death of a criminal. And verse 9, the Bible says, For this reason, for this reason, God has raised him to the highest place above and gave him the name that is greater than any other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. None of these things move me. He went all the way, all the way. By the way, this, this description of, of Jesus Christ giving up all for our salvation, uh, where he emptied himself, the Greek word is kenosis, which means the emptying of oneself. And it literally means Christ emptied himself of all his privileges, of all his glory, yet never at any time did he not cease to be God. He was always very man, always very God. Praise the Lord. And then Paul goes on to say uh, in his third statement, he says, he says that I may finish my race. That I may finish my race. You know, the Christian life has been described as to being like a race. At school, how many of you ran in your house uh, athletics, competed in the races? When you did, what was your aim? As you ran, did you just walk, chew bubble gum, wave to your fans? <laughs> you ran for all your might to cross the line. I can remember running in the under 14, um, 100 meters. Um, the school champion was in that race and we were running and as we approached, of course I was Mr. Useless, as we approached the, uh, the, the winning line we had about uh, uh, 15 meters to go and of course the two front guys ahead of me, they were sort of slowing down now, but I saw the line and I, I gave it all I had, all I had and you know what, I came third, <laughs> he said I'm coming about six or seven, yeah. The aim of the race is to cross it, to cross the winning line. Now, in every race, there is a starting place. And in, in the Christian race, where is that starting place? It is at the cross. It's there we come as a sinner to Jesus, where we humble ourselves before him in repentance and by faith receive his full and free forgiveness. And we receive him as our personal saviour. The race, the Christian race, starts at the cross with the Lord Jesus Christ. And where does it end? It ends at the cross with Christ, who has for us the crown of glory. Praise the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. Paul says, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. And I have kept the faith. The Christian race. Somebody has said, it's not for the good starters, but it's only for the good finishers. In 8, he says, Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of life, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give unto me 
at that day and not only unto me but also to all those who are eagerly looking forward to his coming again the race we're all in this race if we have, have, have accepted Christ and that ever keep before us the finishing line now Paul says in summing up he says none of these things move me nor do I count my life dear unto myself so that I may finish my race how he says with joy hallelujah with joy many many Christians on their deathbeds they've seen into heaven they've seen the joys of heaven and some have even stood there with their arms outreached they can see the welcome they're going to get we were visiting in a retirement home one day beside the bedside of an old saint lady well on in years and as we were there she sort of ignored us and she sat up in her bed with her arms upstretched toward heaven you know they can see into heaven what we can't see yet the dying saints and they saw the joy that was there and she was almost sort of anticipating her coming the joy the joy that was there yeah finish the race Paul says finish the race go on to the end and we think of the Apostle Paul how did he end his life he finished it at the cross but in triumph he was beheaded by Nero outside of Rome and they say on the second or sorry on the 29th of June AD 67 or 68 Paul went to be with the Savior he died a martyr's death true to the end Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, when we were kids growing up, there was another song we used to sing. Um, we don't sing it so much these days. You might want to revive it. It was this. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Keep me true. There's a race that I must run. There are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Keep me true. Look it up in your hymn books and your chorus books that you've gone and put on the shelf in your church. Get it out again. Take note of it and sing it as a prayer chorus of being uh, faithful to the end. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Keep me true. Avril, you don't know, do you? I do. Sing it. Avril's going to sing it for us, please. You know the words. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. There's a race that must be won, there are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. Amen. Almighty God, we ask Thee to keep us true, that we go all the way with Christ. And as the Gospel hymn says, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now the Butler family singers will close with a suitable song for us and may God bless them. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No none go with me, still I will follow. No none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back. No 
turning back, no turning back.